In this chapter we're going to look at complex numbers and first we want to review complex numbers from algebra. I've written over here the definition for i square root of negative 1. It's the same thing as saying that i squared is negative 1. So i itself is not a real number because its square is negative 1. Now here's some examples of how we would use um, the square root of negative 1. Square root of negative 16, if you want to think of it this way you can, square root 16 times square root negative 1 and then the positive square root of 16 is 4, and then by definition, square root negative 1 is i. Square root negative 25 then would be 5i. Square root negative 18, when I take the square root of 18, it's 9 times 3, so I get 3 square root 2 times i, and then usually I write the i out in front of the radical like this, just so I don't confuse it with being under the radical. Likewise, the negative square root of negative 19 will be negative square root 19i, and again, I can take that i and instead of writing it behind the square root, write it in front so I don't confuse it with being underneath there. Now, complex numbers by definition are numbers that have the form a plus b times i, where a and b are real numbers and then i is that square root of negative 1. So, for example, 3 plus 2i, that's a complex number. Here's a real number plus a real number times i. 1 half plus i square root 3, that's a complex number. 7i, when I just have 7i by itself, that's a complex number because it has the form a plus bi when you look at it this way. 0 plus 7i is the same as 7i. Also, negative 8 or any other real number is a complex number because I can write it as negative 8 or whatever real number I have plus 0 times i. So what we want to do now is just review the algebra that we have from um, just with complex numbers from the algebra classes you've had in the past. So let's take a look at our first problem. We want to uh, find x and y if this complex number is equal to this complex number. Well, complex numbers are equal if and only if their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. So the real parts are the parts that do not contain i, so that means that 5x plus 2 must be equal to 4, and then the imaginary parts are the coefficients of i, so negative 7 must be equal to 2y plus 1. So if I solve this for x, I'll add negative 2 to both sides. I get 5x is equal to 2. Divide both sides by 5, and I get x is equal to 2 fifths. On this side, I'll add negative 1 to both sides, and I'll have negative 8 is equal to 2y. Divide both sides by 2 and get y is equal to negative 4. So if this expression is going to be equal to this expression, or these two complex numbers are going to be equal, the real parts will be equal and the imaginary parts will be equal. So I set them equal to each other. Each gives me an equation to solve, which I do. I come out with x equal 2 fifths and y equal negative 4. Here's our next problem. We want to simplify. And uh, it's all addition and subtraction. And the only thing I want you to see here is that addition and subtraction with complex numbers works the same as simplifying expressions in algebra. First, with subtraction here, and I have parentheses, I'll remove the parentheses by changing the sign of each thing inside. So I'll have 3 plus 2i minus 6 minus i plus 5 plus i. So first of all, I remove these parentheses. That changes both the sign of the 6. It becomes negative 6, and i becomes negative i, or subtract 6 and subtract i. Now I'll add similar terms inside the parentheses. 3 plus negative 6 is negative 3. 2i plus negative 1i is i. That plus 5 plus i. Now again, I'll add similar terms. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2, plus i plus i is 2i. And let me check my sheet here, make sure that's right. 2 plus 2i, that's right. Okay, so to simplify an expression that involves addition and subtraction with complex numbers, I simply treat the i as if it was a variable and add similar terms. I can add the numbers without i, and I can add the numbers that do have i in them. So that's how you do addition and subtraction with uh, complex numbers. Let's look at our next problem. We have i to the 32 and i to the 33. Every power of i simplifies to either i, negative 1, negative i, or positive 1. And the trick is, or one way to do it is to say, well, i squared is negative 1, or you can say i to the 4th is positive 1. This is a definition, i squared is negative 1, and if I square both sides of this, I get i to the 4th is 1. So we can use either one of these that we want. Let's try um, 
let's see how many i to the fourth there are in i to the 32. i to the 32 is i to the fourth all raised to the eighth power. Because the power raised to a power, I multiply exponents. i to the fourth is 1 to the eighth, which is equal to 1. Now, i to the 33rd, that's going to be i to the fourth to the eighth. I already know that's i to the 32 times i. So I have 1 to the eighth times i, which is 1 times i, which is just i. So i to the 32 simplifies to 1, i to the 33 simplifies down to just i. So I can take out i to the seconds out of here if I want, or I can take out i to the fourth. Either one uh, seems to work real well, and then I'll, what I'll have left over is either a 1, a negative 1, an i, or a negative i. In any case, I can simplify any power of i down to 1, i, negative 1, or negative i. Our next problem involves multiplication. 3 plus 2i squared. Well, if I want to, I can look at it this way. This is a plus b to the second. It has the form of a binomial square. That's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared if I was to multiply, if I was to use the formula for the expansion of a plus b squared. If I do the same thing to this, I get 3 squared plus 2 times 3 times 2i plus 2i quantity squared. Now let me take this down here. That's going to be equal to 9 plus 3 times 2 is 6 times 2 is 12 i plus 4 2 i quantity squared is 4 i squared. Now here's the point where we use that definition that i is the square root of negative 1 or i squared itself is negative 1 and to replace i squared with negative 1. Now, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, plus 9 is 5. I end up with 5 plus 12i. So you can see the square of a complex number is itself a complex number. The square of 3 plus 2i comes out to be 5 plus 12i, and I find that by just multiplying as if it's a polynomial, except that everywhere I see an i squared, I can replace it with a negative 1. As a matter of fact, any power of i that I end up with in any kind of multiplication problem I can replace it with a 1, negative 1, i, or negative i, depending on what the exponent is. But what you're going to see most often is i squared, and it's replaced with negative 1, and then we end up with a complex number for our answer. Let's go to the next problem now, which also involves multiplication. a plus bi times a minus bi. These are what are called complex conjugates. I'll multiply them using the formula for a sum times a difference. It will end up a squared minus bi quantity squared. This is the kind of product that always results in the difference of two squares. That's a squared minus, when I square bi, I get b squared i squared. That's a squared minus b squared times negative 1. And that is a squared plus b squared, which is a real number. See, there's no i's left in the a squared plus b squared. So whenever I multiply complex conjugates like this, I'm going to end up with just a squared plus b squared. It has no i's in it. It turns out to be a real number. Now, this fact happens to be important in division with complex numbers, which we're going to do next. Here's that example. 2 plus i divided by 5 minus 6i. What makes this... Uh, the, I'm not actually going to do what would look like division, but what I'm going to do is get this i out of the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. Because of what I've done on the problem above this, 5 minus 6i times 5 plus 6i will always end up to be a real number, or I won't have any i's left in the denominator. Now multiplying on top, I have 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 6i is 12i. i times 5 is 5i. And i times 6i is 6i squared. I'll just write that, 6i squared. On the bottom, I'm going to use the formula I have from the problem above and write this as 25 plus 36. When I multiply conjugates like this, I get the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, the, the coefficient of i squared, and it's always plus. So what do we have? 10 plus 6 times i squared. This is 6 times negative 1, or negative 6 plus 10 is 4.
plus 12i plus 5i is 17i, all divided by 25 plus 36. 25 plus 36 turns out to be, what, 61? So here's my complex number, 4 over 61 plus 17 over 61 times i. So it might not look like division to you, but I take this complex number, 2 plus i, divide it by 5 minus 6i, and I end up with the complex number 4 over 61 plus 17 over 61i. Or it's just a number that has the form a plus b times i, so it's a complex number. So this is division. It looks a lot like rationalizing the denominator from algebra. So that's a review of add, subtract, multiply, and divide with complex numbers, the algebraic part that you know from your algebra classes. Next, we'll get into the trigonometric part.